The violence between Israelis and Palestinians is worsening. Hamas has launched another barrage of rockets deep into Israel, while Israeli airstrikes are raining down in Gaza. These are live pictures from Gaza City, where we know more buildings have been struck and at least 83 Palestinians are reported to have died. Seven people have died in Israel. Well, the BBC's Paul Adams is in Jerusalem. Paul, as we can see from these pictures, night has fallen, but I assume the fighting hasn't stopped. Well, I haven't had any reports of uh, uh, rocket attacks into Israel for a little while. In fact, I don't think there have been any casualties from rocket attacks into Israel today, although there were salvos earlier in the day. I think most of those were intercepted by Israel's Iron Dome missile defense system. Airstrikes have continued at various times during the day in Gaza, uh, with the Israelis still talking about having a wide array of Hamas targets that they want to hit. I think there's a really concerted feeling uh, in the Israeli military that they want to inflict as much damage as they can on Hamas uh, before this conflict is over. Uh, so, and, and you mentioned in your introduction there the possibility of a ground operation. We have seen some signs of troops massing on the border that could mark the prelude to something uh, like a ground operation. Uh, and if it does happen, then it could be a rerun of what we saw in 2014, when it wasn't just scores of people who were killed, but thousands of people who were killed. And I think that's something that uh, the Israelis are going to think pretty seriously about before pulling the trigger on an operation of that kind. Paul, is anyone on either side doing anything to try and de-escalate this? Not obviously, no. I mean, there is uh, a, a bit of diplomacy in the wind. Uh, Joe Biden is sending a Middle East envoy uh, to, to come and discuss uh, the situation. We know that there are efforts going on behind the scenes, which we're not really privy to, involving Egypt and Qatar and the kinds of uh, players who often do get involved in negotiations between Israel and Hamas. Uh, we don't know what progress, if any, they're making, but all the rhetoric at the moment suggests that both sides are in this for, uh, if not the long haul, then certainly uh, in it for some time yet. Paul, thank you very much indeed. This is Paul Adams live with us from Jerusalem. Well, this conflict has taken another dangerous turn because violence has broken out between Jews and Israeli Arabs in some of the worst clashes we've seen for years. Videos of attacks by Jewish and Israeli Arab mobs are being widely shared. One attack was caught on TV before we see it. A warning, this is shocking. We're seeing Jewish Israelis attacking a driver in Bat Yam, which is a coastal city south of Tel Aviv. According to local media, they first attacked Arab-owned property before turning on the driver. These next pictures of the incident are also distressing. This is before the group attack. As you can see, the driver is reversing from crowds. He's stopped by another car, then he drives towards them and stopped, and then is pulled from his car and beaten. The crowds here say the man was trying to ram them, but that's disputed. Then we have these pictures from the town of Acre. This Israeli restaurant was destroyed in riots between Arabs and Jews. One Jewish man is reportedly in a serious condition after being attacked with sticks and rocks. Well, Israel's president, Reuven Rivlin, described the outbreaks of rioting as senseless civil war. And this is Israel's prime minister. This is anarchy. Nothing can justify it. And I will tell you more than that. Nothing can justify a lynching of Jews by Arabs, and nothing can justify a lynching of Arabs by Jews. We will not accept this. This is not us, not this violence, not this savagery. We will bring back governance to Israel's cities everywhere, in all cities. Well, an Arab-Israeli member of parliament had different words to describe what's happening. Ada Tumma Sliman has told the BBC that Benjamin Netanyahu is stoking violence for personal reasons. Have a listen. There is a political intention by the Prime Minister Netanyahu and his ministers to escalate the situation more and more. If the debate in Israel and the discussion and the tension till last month was between uh, Bibi's camp and the anti-Benjamin Netanyahu's camp, they wanted to divert it into a kind of a war, a citizen's war between Jews and Arabs. If those organized groups with weapon 
are still going to continue like this. I'm so afraid that we can lose control on the situation and it can become something really bad. Now, we've seen violence in the centre of the city of Lod, where a state of emergency is in place. Our correspondent, Yola Nell, is there. All around Lod, you've got scenes like this. Honestly, it looks like a war zone. You've got burnt out cars, curbstones that have been ripped up in all the rioting that has taken place. And there are scorched buildings just along the street here. A Jewish school was set on fire next to the synagogue. And now there's a lot of police all around on the street corners. Residents are very nervous. I spoke to one Jewish mother. She told me that she'd always known there were tensions here, but she felt they were very much under the surface, under control. But when you speak to some of the Arab residents, Palestinian citizens of Israel, they say that they have known there was this anger under the surface, ready to erupt at any time. They've long felt like there was discrimination against them, that they were second-class citizens of Israel. And at the same time as all of this is playing out locally, we've had reminders of the conflict that's still going on between Israel and militants in Gaza, with rockets fired from the Gaza Strip. And that just made loud explosions over our heads. Now, let's emphasize some important context here. During the war surrounding the creation of Israel in 1948, hundreds of thousands of Arabs were forced from or fled their homes. Those who stayed in what became Israel and their ancestors have been granted Israeli citizenship and are known as Israeli Arabs. Currently, there are 100, close to 2 million Israeli Arabs. 80% of them are Muslim and the rest identify as either Christian or Druze. And most Israeli Arabs identify strongly with Palestinians in Gaza and in the occupied West Bank and call themselves Palestinian citizens of Israel. Well, Amnon Barare uh, Sulit Ziar Nonis is the CEO of the Abraham Initiatives. It's a group promoting integration and equality for Jewish and Arab Israeli citizens. These are his concerns. The bottom line is that we are extremely, extremely worried. All of those who are wor worried about the integrity of Israeli society and coexistence between the Jewish majority and Palestinian minority within Israel. Uh, there are 20 percent uh, 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 Israeli citizens who are Palestinians and everything seems to fall apart. There are thousands and thousands of meeting points between Jews and Arabs within Israel in universities and colleges, in shopping centers, in workplaces, NGOs, government ministries. And those contact points are becoming um, very dangerous. Uh, there are confrontations, hostilities, uh, 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 actions of lynch uh, 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 coming from one community towards another. And uh, this is very, uh, very stressful. Uh, the feeling is that we are deteriorating into a situation that reminds us all of the Balkans uh, years ago. That's uh, very troubling. Well, next we turn to Gaza because there's no let up in the conflict there either. Israel has intensified its bombardments. It's now hitting intelligence buildings and banks. This airstrike struck this morning on the first day of Eid. That's the Muslim festival that marks the end of Ramadan. The de devastation, we're told, was significant. Meanwhile, Hamas is continuing to fire rockets from Gaza into Israel. It's also using drones. This is said to show Hamas militants preparing a suicide drone attack towards Israel. We should say this is unverified footage released by the Hamas war office. So no let up in the fighting, no let up in the rhetoric. Here's the prime minister again, Benjamin Netanyahu. The defensive actions of Iron Dome batteries give a space to mount attacks. The IDF has already attacked hundreds of targets. We're continuing to strike Hamas while defending our citizens. And this is a Hamas spokesperson. All Palestinians have resisted these atrocities, this oppression. So everyone has chosen his own way to resist, but they have all of them rejected these policies, policies of the Israelis. Therefore, again, the key is very simple, to withdraw the security forces from the uh, Al-Aqsa compound and to stop ethnic cleansing of Palestinian people from Sheikh Jarrah. That's it. The aggressor is clear. It is Israel, based on the international law and based on UN reports. Well, Israel has moved troops towards the Gaza border as it prepares for all eventualities and an escalation. Our correspondent, Rushdi Abu Alof, is in Gaza and has this update. 
Uh, today uh, in, uh, in the morning there was a little bit of, of uh, a brief uh, calm. We saw uh, some people out and about in the streets. Uh, I saw some people going to the bakeries to stock up for the uh, uh, night. Uh, but uh, uh, very quickly the sound of rockets and the sound of airstrikes will push people again to uh, go back to, uh, to uh, their homes. The people were uh, shocked by the scale of the destruction, the scale of the uh, uh, fire. Uh, both from Israel and from the militancy group uh, Hamas uh, here, and they remind the people of the 2014 uh, 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 war. Uh, and this is really very worrying news for the people. Now, this conflict has now been going for four days. We've been hearing from residents living in Gaza and living in Israel. First of all, here's the experience of Ahmed Aronson. He's in Jaffa and has been showing the BBC how he's keeping safe. So this is the entrance to the Mamad, our apartment's uh, safe unit. There is one door which is steel and is blast proof. You can slide it, to close open, and then there's another actual door. The room, as you can see, has an air filtration system in case you need to seal it. And then there is a normal looking window. You can see the beautiful skyline of Tel Aviv, but you can close the shutter. And then there is another shutter made from steel which is blast proof and you have to close it and close the window so you have a triple layer of protection inside the mamad the apartment's protection the apartment's safe room and then this is i have suleiman in northern gaza this area we uh right now while i'm talking to you i can hear uh bombings and uh heavy bombings uh, nearby and around. Uh, it's successive terrifying attacks. Um, they're like sounds of death every, um, everywhere. We cannot have a blink of an eye. We cannot sleep at all uh, because of the heavy bombings around. Um, like, um, personally speaking, for me, I slept at 7 a.m. in the morning for less than an hour, and this is what I could do. Uh, for my children, things are horribly horrible. Children and kids, like, can never, um, like, bear this uh, uh, heavy bombing everywhere. We just try to calm them down, to chill, chill them out. This is all we could do. Today is supposed to be the eat for them, the, uh, we could say, the best occasion for them, uh, instead of, like, um, having uh, smiles and um, living beautiful times and keeping them as memories. What's happening right now in Gaza is like uh, murdering and killing and bombing and missiles everywhere. This creates a sense of like uh, of horror inside every, every child in Gaza. Well, Gaza is a strip of land bordering Egypt, Israel and the Mediterranean. It's only 360 kilometers square. It's much poorer and smaller than the West Bank. The territory is one of the most densely populated areas in the world. 1.9 million people live there. 1.4 million of them are registered as refugees. And Hamas reinforced its power in Gaza in 2007 after it ousted its Palestinian rival Fatah. Since then, Israeli sanctions on the Strip have tightened. There are restrictions on people's movement, goods, and on fishing. And there's no dispute that Israel is the far greater power here as Hamas and Israel face down. Here's the foreign affairs analyst, Jonathan Marcus. Well, look, this is a, a totally asymmetric and imbalanced struggle. Uh, Israel is a, a regional military power. Uh, it has uh, technology uh, in many senses equivalent to that of uh, uh, the United States and other uh, highly developed countries. Uh, so we're seeing it using its air power, uh, largely fixed wing aircraft, maybe helicopters as well, I don't know. Uh, it obviously has very sophisticated intelligence gathering uh, capabilities. It's built up a remarkable archive of intelligence uh, on uh, the Gaza Strip. I think that's clear uh, from the fact that a number of senior Hamas uh, commanders have been killed. Uh, it believes that it is destroying uh, weapons stores and weapons factories uh, and so on. Uh, in, in terms of, uh, of a balance of power, there simply is no balance. Israel is overwhelmingly the more powerful uh, actor here. Uh, and uh, whilst uh, Palestinian rockets 
uh, can clearly cause uh, deaths, damage and casualties uh, inside Israel. Uh, the longer this struggle goes on, it's going to get uh, much, much worse, the imbalance of casualties. And we see that imbalance of casualties uh, already. And picking up on Jonathan's points, the disproportionate number of Palestinian deaths has been put to Israel's defence spokesperson. This was his response. Hamas purposely embeds its military infrastructure within the civilian population, creating an almost impossible situation where they are using Palestinian civilians as their human shields while yep. they fire rocket at, rockets at our civilians. But let me be really again iterate. We are careful and mindful of civilian casualties in Gaza, and we are going out of our way to minimize them. We understand the situation and we don't want to hurt other people. But when, all, when it all comes down, we have to defend ourselves. We have to defend our civilians. And this kind of attacks, we simply cannot tolerate them. The reality, though, is that casualties and deaths are rising and international efforts to stem the violence, both going into Gaza and coming out of it, are being stepped up. The US President Joe Biden is sending a special envoy who's due in the region soon. Let's hear from the BBC's Barbara Plett Usher in Washington on his role. The envoy is uh, the Deputy Assistant Secretary for Israeli and Palestinian Affairs, um, Hadi Amr. He's very experienced. He has up until now really been working on the Palestinian side to try to uh, r restore ties that were broken under the Trump administration. So he knows the brief, he knows the file very well, but he is a mid-level diplomat. And what analysts here have pointed out is that he doesn't really have the diplomatic heft to, to try to change the trajectory if, the, if those on the ground aren't interested uh, in doing so, unless perhaps he's carrying a personal message from the president, um, which may be the case, although we haven't been, been told that is the case. Uh, here, the message has been uh, very much uh, of strong support for Israel's right to self-defense. Secretary Blinken has inserted language about Palestinian human rights. He's inserted, inserted uh, calls for caution on the Israeli side about civilian casualties, but both here and at the White House, um, there has been a very strong statement that the Israelis have the right uh, to self-defense and this is really in keeping with the way administrations have responded to conflicts between Israel and Gaza um, past administrations uh, at least in the initial phases uh, and that is where they're standing right now.